the 1971-72 season, League Division 3, finishing 17th, League Cup, second round, FA Cup, first round. George Kirby, unsurprisingly, returned all the players that had performed so well the previous season, and there was talk, naturally, of the club going one better this time around. The sides began its preparation for the forthcoming season with a short tour, once again, of Ireland, before playing hosts to one of the biggest clubs in the world, Manchester United in the Watney Cup. This was a tournament for each division's top scorers not involved in Europe or promotion, and the game at the Shea kicked off a new season covered by the BBC's match of the day. The bumper crowd of 19,765, and later that evening millions on TV, witnessed one of the shocks of the season as a star-studded Manchester United side that included George Best, Bobby Charlton and Dennis Law were beaten 2-1 by an enthusiastic town side. Four days later, the Shearmen were beaten in the semi-finals 2-0 at home by a ruthless West Bromwich Albion, now under the guidance of future England coach Don Howe. Colin Suggett scored both, both West Brom's goals. George Kirby, however, was preparing to say his farewells to his players and the fans. When 2nd Division Watford lost manager Ken Furpe to Blackburn Rovers, it was to Halifax Town and Kirby that they turned for a replacement. Watford were hardly a glamour club but they were without a doubt bigger than Halifax, and so on the 5th of August, the day after Town's exit from the Watney Cup, Kirby announced that he was leaving and he took up the post at Vicarage Road the following week. In June, Chairman Alan Maiden resigned, which meant that his successor, Arthur Smith, a Nottingham-based businessman, found that his first job was to appoint Kirby's successor. The board interviewed, among others, Jack Crompton, the Manchester United trainer, but on the 10th of August, just four days before the new league season was due to start, Plump for Barrow coach Ray Henderson, appointed him as the new Halifax Town manager. Henderson pledged attacking football. He reckoned in the Kirby mould, but made no promises to how the team would fare. He privately believed that Town were not yet geared to second division soccer. Should they get there in his time? But alas, neither he nor the team ever got close. The 1971-72 season was disappointing to say the least, yet it promised so much to start with. Only one game was lost from the first five, and after the disposal of local rivals Rochdale at the first attempt, third attempt in the League Cup, Town performed admirably at St James's Park, losing 2-1 at First Division Newcastle United. The Magpies' latest hot shot, number nine Malcolm McDonald, was one of the scorers. With hindsight, the rock seemed to set in after a game that Town had dominated but in which they ended up with nothing. Aston Villa would go on to clinch the title, but at the Shea on the 18th of September, they were decidedly second best, only to steal the points with a late Ray Graydon goal. Town barely recovered. Despite taking winger John Farley on loan from George Kirby's Watford, he proved a success with three goals from six games. The club was not helped by the shock transfer of the popular Dave Leonard, albeit for a welcome club record of £30,500 to Blackpool on the 7th of October. Shortly afterwards, Henderson lost the services of coach Mick Buxton, who left to join forces with Kirby at Watford. At least the appointment of his successor, George Mulhall, the former Aberdeen, Sunderland and Scotland international, would prove a significant one for Halifax Town. Mulhall took up his coaching duties on the 18th of October, by which time Town had cascaded down the table. In an effort to stem the tide, Henderson took midfielder Johnny Johnston on loan from Blackpool, then delved into the transfer market, buying firstly outside right Frank Brogan, then forward Terry Shanahan, both from Ipswich Town, for £4,000 and £8,000 respectively. Cruelly, Town were denied the services of Brogan after he broke his leg in a challenge with Plymouth's Steve Davy at the Shea in only his third game, and he would not play again that season. Town were lying 16th and looking forward to a morale-boosting run in the FA Cup when they travelled to Northern Premier League outfit Wigan Athletic for their first round match. But their season went from bad to worse as the home side ran up to a two-goal half-time lead, which Town, despite a late rally, found too much to pull back. Out of the Cup, Henderson's response on the 2nd of December was to break the club transfer record by signing Blackpool's Fred Kemp for £13,500. Slowly he was trying to mould his own team, but results were hardly improving. After defeat at Rochdale in late January, Town lay 19th, just two places above the relegation zone, and pressure from the fans reached such a pitch that the board and management held public talk, held a public talk in, where they outlined their hopes for the club. The players responded with their highest victory of the season, 
but Dave Chadwick's goal in their 4-1 win over Exxon was also his last for the Shearmen. He had earlier expressed a desire to leave, and on the 24th of February he did so, moving to Bournemouth for £12,000, a somewhat meagre sum for a player of such high talent. The lowest point of Town's league season was undoubtedly in their 5-0 defeat, and in the manner in which they succumbed to it at the hands of Brighton at the Shea. On this show, in Town were looking relegation certainties, but three consecutive wins at the end of March and the beginning of April did much to ease such fears. However, they were still not safe from the drop when they went into their last home game of the season against Shrewsbury. The ensuing goalless draw ensured their survival, but Town's return of only one win from their last nine games give cause for concern. The side finished 17th, just two points clear of relegation. Tendon figures too were worrying, for they had begun to dip regularly before, below the 3,000 mark, and the directors felt the need to take drastic action. On the 16th of May, just four days after picking his last Halifax Town team that season, it was for a West Riding Senior Cup final, in which Town lost 4-3 to First Division League United, that Henderson was sacked. Ray Henderson was unlucky. The side was always going to find it hard to match the achievements of the previous term, and the sale of some of the top players was not necessarily his responsibility. He sought replacements and in Frank Brogan found a good one. It must have been heartbreaking for Henderson to see him break his leg so early on. Arthur Smith had begun the season appointing a new manager. He would spend part of the summer starting the process all over again. Did you know fact? Ian Lofer signed for Halifax Town from Brentford in 1968 in the House of Commons. The Brentford chairman was a member of parliament.